Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake, and today I'm joined by Russ over in Studio B. Hey, everybody. How's it going, Russy? <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a good trick there. <laughs> uh, we got an exciting one for you all today. It's all about the premium project, the newest premium project to launch, which is the rising table from our friend Johannes Mueller over in Germany. And mm -hmm. this is... This this is, is uh... This, is, your this is a really good one. This is yeah, a, this you is focused a really on this one. one today. We uh, we developed this with Johannes. He's a joiner over in Germany, studying for his basically master's masters. They have several levels of mastery over there. Uh, he's already become a master joiner, and now he's working on becoming a master interior designer and furniture designer, product designer. Uh, so one of his big pieces of coursework was to design something with a company. That's us. And he helped us design this rising table, which basically takes the entirety of his knowledge as a joiner to create this cool little table with beautiful, impeccable, well-considered joinery that's going to make a thing that lasts. And a thing that's modular. That's a big part of his whole ethos on this table, uh, which I certainly appreciate. And we will get more into. As always, we want to remind everyone that you have a little question at the bottom of your screen in order to get in our uh, giveaway at the end of the show you must answer that question I believe the question today is what it is yeah tell us exactly what is, what is what what cutters would you like us to stock in our store yes so we've got a treat for you that we're gonna drop a little bit later today that's involved with this project I won't spill the beans yet uh, but we've got some new cutters coming, and we're going to highlight one today. We also want to know what else you want to see from us coming up. Yeah, so go ahead and answer that question. And as always, put all your questions in the post or in the chat below so we can answer them in the Q&A section at the end. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, a little reminder for what Premium Projects is. We Starting out with Origin could be, you know, Figuring out what you want to make can be some somewhat a little intimidating. So we took a little bit of the work off of your plate, and we put together a huge range of uh, different premium projects that you can buy. Some are cheap, some are free, some are a little pricier, all of which in varying degrees of skill levels. And they are step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, with uh, cut settings, step-by-step -step to get you to a beautiful project by the end of it. So. This is our newest entry into our premium project catalog. We're very excited mm -hmm. about it. Why don't we pull that up? I've got Shaper Hub pulled up here on my laptop, uh, jockeying the laptop over here from Studio 2. Let's do it. Let me see if I can get the screen share going. I'm going to share this window. Here we go. Goose, we got Goose on the switchboard. Goose, can you see this? We got it. Jake says we got it. OK, cool. Uh, so these are our premium projects. We've got, let's see, nine of them now, I think. Yep, here's the last one down here. And like Jake said, these are instructional. These tell you everything you need to know from start to finish. Sometimes the community projects on Shaper Hub can, be, can leave a little to be desired in the detail department. But for example, for this rising table, we've got a full bill of materials. We've got 60 step-by-step -step instructions. We can just click in through here, and you can see the level of production that has gone into these. We sent a team out to meet Johannes in Germany to document this project with him. And we've got those cut files also just absolutely dialed for you. Sometimes creating those digital files can be a barrier to getting started with Origin. So for every premium project, we share those files pre-developed with you. And you can get straight to cutting without having to learn a digital design tool. Uh, you can get started with Origin and then pick up that additional skill later when you want to start working on your own projects. Unique for this one, you can see down here we've got this multi-language support also. This is something that we started doing for our last two premium projects. And so for our customers in Europe, these projects are also available in German and French natively as a PDF download. And like Jake said, some of these are free, some of them are paid, um, but especially the free ones we like to have on file as an intro to Origin. Uh, for example, this candle holder I know off the top of my head is free. And Jake, you did a session on this one very recently, didn't you? I did. I think it's a fantastic first project, first, maybe second, you know, after you get the 
the feeling for origin itself jump into this project and it will teach you everything from offsets to pocketing uh to on tool design and using position great stuff mm -hmm. let's jump back into this rising table here and just to give you a sense of the amount of detail that goes into these we can pop into the instructions super easy to navigate you can do this on your computer on your tablet or on your phone and for example if we go over here to let's say cut a dovetail which is something that we're going to do later in the show we're going to cut this cross frame dovetail you can see the setup here is enumerated in a photo We've got a list of all of the tools, materials, and cut files you're going to need for each step. And then we also have the cut settings that are relevant for each step as well as you go through each step. Um, this is not a cutting step, I guess, so no cut settings on this one particularly. But we've got step details and everything that you need for each of those. So what are we going to cut today, Jake? We are going to cut the fun bits. We're going to do one of the stretchers um, and talk about how... If there's a hybrid cutting operation in this project where you cut uh, about six millimeters deep and you have the option to take it over to the bandsaw and then a router table to do um, a flush trim. And again, this whole project is you can either make a single one or you could make three or six and stack them together. So a lot of this project is designed around repetition and kind of making those batch parts. So we're going to cut one of those cross members. We're going to then cut the dovetail on top of it. And finally, the two sliding dovetail slots and the bottom of the top, and we'll do a test fit. And of course, at the end, we'll do a final assembly because that's our favorite part. Mm -hmm. One thing very important that we didn't mention, um, a lot of these paid projects or these premium projects are paid, but with our just announced June promo, if you buy Origin today, you will get this premium project for free as well. Um, and we've got a couple other things that go along with that. We've got the $100 discount when you bundle Origin and Workstation. We've got a two training class bundle with your guy, Jake, over here. And what's the, what's the other thing, Jake? It's something with cutters, I think. The Essential Bit Kit. So this is an additional three essential cutters in a very cool little sustainer. It comes with your purchase. So mm -hmm. you can never have enough cutters and a cool sustainer, you know. Mm -hmm. And free shipping. And free course. shipping, of course, yes. So uh, I know many people here are already Origin owners. Some are not. But if you all have friends that haven't been on sessions, tell them to join us next Wednesday, I believe it is. Right, Russ? Next Wednesday at noon Pacific, we're there doing a promo live stream that is, uh, you know, uh, get acquainted with Origin. We do these sessions, which we try to format both for beginners and advanced users, try and mix it up a little bit. But if we, if we did too much of the basics all the time, I think some of our returning uh, viewers would get bored. So we take these promo live streams to really break it down to the fundamentals and get people comfortable with what it would be like to operate an Origin in their shop. Yeah, and show you what it can do give you an idea mm -hmm. a little inspiration mm -hmm. so that is next or this yeah. coming wednesday 12 o'clock pacific tell your friends tell your family we'll see you there yeah exactly all right i've got one more cool website pulled oh, up here yeah. so we've talked about this project but i just want to show off some of this other work that johannes has done let's get this going again do the screen sharing here and this takes a second every time but hopefully everyone can see this. Do we have this pulled up? Got this in the monitor, Jake? Correct. Okay, cool. This is, let's go to home here. This is Johannes Mueller, young joiner from Germany, master joiner and soon to be master designer as well. Um, we're very lucky to have him on the origin train just by virtue of the incredible work that he puts out. So you can see here the rising table right at the top this is the latest project that he's done with us uh they're modular completely stackable make one make five they all go together this project over here this stool which i love this is also available on shaper hub and that's a free community project cool stacking stool slash side table and then you can see some of the other really high quality work that he has done 
for his joinery apprenticeships. How long does it take to become a master joiner in Germany? Do you remember, Jake? Oof. Wanna say... It's not quite a decade, but it's close. Yeah. I think it's something like Look six, at this lamp. six years. I could be wrong. This is absolutely incredible. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Coopered in a way, but also with that perfect light gap showing all the way through. Really cool stuff. So this is the quality of... Uh, quality of craftsmanship that we're working with here. And this is where that traditional joinery and making things come together the, the right way that lasts a long time is, that's where that comes from. Yeah, and if you watch the video that we shot with Johannes, he speaks a little bit to that towards the end of the video, uh, just about how the things that we make going forward are the things that are gonna be around us for the rest of our lives and to, to make something truly sustainable is to make something that is meant to be passed down generation through generations and also can can grow with us so hence the modularity yeah. i i feel like we've done so much these last three or four weeks that it's hard to remember all of it because you're right we do also have two videos <laughs> that go along with all of this that everyone should watch. We have an origin in action video that you can find on our YouTube channel that shows uh, more broadly how Johannes uses origin in his workshop and in his process. And then we also do have a build video specifically related to this premium project. There's a link to that in the premium project, but I think you can also find that on our YouTube channel as well. And that goes into some great tips. If you remember the build video that we did with Philip Morley, his tips for building the T-Rack and how much we all got out of that one. This is the same thing, but for a table. Um, I learned a ton, I know, and I think you all will too. So check those out as well. Yeah. Cool. What do you say? Should we get into it? I think that's all the talking that I've got for now. Yeah. <laughs> let's do some cutting. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right. Let's start over here. Yeah. We're going to start off with one of those profile cuts. Again, this project is you can either cut all the way through this material um, because it is three quarter what's the actual measurement it's yeah right so for premium projects we do uh both inch and metric versions the metric version is 18 millimeters thick the inch version is three quarters of an inch thick Perfect. and with the reason we we do that is because the the english to metric conversions or the inch to metric conversions aren't exact so if you have something like a 500 millimeter long tabletop we don't want you to be making a you know 18.729 inch cut we want to round that to something that's reasonable actually yeah. and then rebuild the project around those dimensions cool i'm going to dive into this and do a quick rough cut down to six millimeters and then a finish pass So this is a little introductory for some of you who may have watched several Shaper sessions with us, but cutting this contour just shows how Origin works at its fundamental level. Um, we have this crosshairs that Jake is trying to keep that moving dot inside of, inside of that circle, and that circle represents Origin's corrective range. Um, so as Jake pilots the router by hand, he is introducing naturally a little bit of error. Uh, the closer to the center of the circle you are, the less error you personally are introducing to the system. But then what Origin does is it automatically compensates for that error by moving the spindle in the direction of whatever offset you've introduced. So as Jake goes around this whole profile, the reason that this profile is oversized is because Origin is going to take that profile, uh, you're going to follow it all the way around, and you are going to get a perfect cut uh, that is completely parallel on the long axes and perpendicular on the short axes, and you have these nice contours where it curves in toward the top to support the tabletop. Um, really just auto-correcting for your hands as you go. If you are confident with a table saw, this is a small tip for this project. If you are very confident with the table saw, you could save some of this cut time by cutting these parts to exact dimension with that table saw. But what keeping this material oversized does uh, is allows you to be a little more slapdash 
with the traditional woodworking and just finish it all right up with Origin. And we should take a moment, actually, after Jake, after you finish this pass, to talk about how we would then finish this part as well. Vacuuming it off there, of course. There it is. Quick rough pass with a 0.5 millimeter offset and then a zero millimeter offset. Um, and what Russ was talking about is that I'll zoom out here a little bit. So my grid is based off of these stop blocks. You can show it here, Goose, for me. This right here, and this is my tape board. So I can just swap this piece out quickly with some double-sided tape, reference up and over, and my grid is completely uh, reusable. And it's just slightly inset, again, just so I can be a little quicker with it. And I'm not relying on uh, the dimension that came right off the table saw. Mm -hmm. But from here... Now, what would you do with that part now, Jake, now that you've cut that one pass? Because that's not a, tape, that's not a part that I would want to put in my table as is, obviously. <laughs> exactly. So from here, I would carefully pry it up. Take this over to the bandsaw. Rough cut in my channel just to get rid of this material, which then leaves me with the perfect space for a following bearing in a router table. So I take this over to the router table, set my height, and just zip it out following that origin cut. Something I like to call mm -hmm. hybrid cutting. Mm -hmm. And if you're using double-sided tape for this project, like we are at headquarters, you could absolutely cut all the way through that three-quarter inch piece with our standard router bits that are included with Origin. They'll go to that depth easily. Um, but there are a couple of reasons why you might want to do this hybrid cutting approach for bigger projects, for example, or for a neat work holding trick that Johannes showcases in his how to complete this project video. Um, what he does is he actually doesn't use double-sided tape, but he clamps the parts using a tail vise and a left side work stop on his traditional hand tool woodworking bench, which I thought was really cool. And to do that, if you're going to use Origin to cut around that entire profile, you do need to leave a little bit of material underneath so that that clamping force has some material to travel through as you clamp that material on your bench. Yeah, that and so you so, don't actually clamp in or there. cut into your, your beautiful workbench. Right, or accidentally you'll cut into your workbench, right? That's the other pitfall there. Uh, quick mention here, I just moved over to my workstation. I already have this workspace set up, and I just want to show you what the screen looks like the second I set down my origin. Bingo. It recognizes where I am. I just tap that green button, and I am right. We should have titled that workspace, Jake. I should have titled that workspace. <laughs> I think that's on me because I think I set this up the other day. Golly. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dovetail. Bingo. All right. There we go. Here's my workspace. I don't know if you can see in the side cam what my clamping setup looks like, but just using the... Uh, origin clamps. I have my clamping face down on the second position so that it is open in the back because I'm going to come around both sides with my dovetail cutter. This guy. I don't think we've talked enough about this. Yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing with this dovetail cutter? This, this dovetail, dovetail cutter came out of nowhere. Uh-huh. We are using a dovetail cutter. To make a sliding dovetail? To make a slide. Well, a tapered sliding dovetail. Ah, uh, of course. Not just a sliding dovetail, no. but a tapered sliding dovetail. And uh, this is like the pinnacle of joinery in this table here. This is how this tabletop is attached to the frame of the table. Uh, we're going to cut a positive tapered sliding dovetail on the top of the cross members of this table frame. And then we're going to come back and cut the negative of that tapered sliding dovetail in the tabletop. I just wanted to revisit that because it's so cool to me. And I don't think we really drove that home at all. Totally. We are using an eight millimeter bit, which I want to remind, or I'm sorry, an eight millimeter collet, which I want to remind everyone you can access by buying the collet kit on our website. 
and it comes with every possible mm-hmm. collet you can need for Origin. Mm-hmm. That really opens up the possibilities in terms of cutters. Oh, yeah. Okie dokie. Our bit size is, I have this written down, is 13.8. 13.8. I have that one drilled into my head. And Z Touch. We are doing this in one shot at a depth of 7.5. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'd like to just take a minute to explain this toolpath also once you get over to the cut file. Yep. Once you drop it in there. I just want to show off that I ha- that we have a back left grid set up. Almost all these projects or all these files use a back left grid. Hop into design, import. And I'm imagining it is should be file 3.2. 3.2 cross, cross dovetail. dovetail millimeter. Mhm. Boom. Zero, zero. And here we go. Mm-hmm. So this is, is a okay. very cool cut file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to talk about this for a second. This is an online cut that's been pre-programmed uh, specifically for this dovetail cutter that's listed in the project. Uh, not to spill the beans too much, but you can also expect this dovetail cutter in our store very, very soon. It's not quite ready yet, but it'll be there shortly. Um, And the reason that this is an online cut is because with these undercutting router bits, you really don't want to plunge or retract anywhere except specifically where where you want them at the start and the end of the cut away from where you're actually cutting that dovetail. Because if you can imagine retracting as you're cutting a dovetail, the cutter is underneath your material and you're going to get this hole that punches up through the dovetail, uh, really not what you want there at all. So... We have this online cut pre-programmed for exactly the right dimensions for this dovetail cutter. Um, You're going to start on the line, uh, work counterclockwise all the way around so that you avoid climb cutting and stick with conventional cutting against the spin direction of the router bit. Go all the way around, and then when you reach that exit point, then you can retract. Yeah. And these are the two, the entry and exit points. A reminder, uh, just a note to plunge on the left side, left little leg here. That's going to put you in the uh, put mm-hmm. you going in the right direction. And of mm-hmm. course, do not. And you can retract. see those marching ants. You can see those marching ants going uh, counterclockwise now if you're on the correct one, and clockwise if you're on the incorrect side. Cool. Let's boogie. I'm going to bump my speed down to four mm-hmm. and get cutting. Cool. Now, this is going to be a pretty quick cut. Uh, The reason that we can do an online cut compared to an outside cut with this, you all are probably pretty familiar with outside cuts dialing in the fit of a tenon, for example. Well, usually for a tenon, you work down to a zero offset, or at least that's what we teach here on sessions. Uh, Work down to a zero offset and then do all of your fitting on the mortise. And that's because with Origin and Workstation, it's much easier to bring the tenon or the positive end of the cut over to the mortise or the negative side of the cut. So that's basically exactly what we're going to do here. We're cutting this positive side of the dovetail first. And then when we go over to that tabletop, we're going to be doing an inside cut where you do have to be a little more careful to start and end in the right place. But then you can use offsets with that inside cut to tune the fit with the dovetail if needed. Easy peasy. Just being especially steady on that cut. Again, we're not taking off a whole lot of material. Just enough to get us a beautifully sharp dovetail. Mm -hmm. You do want to be careful, though, that you don't get too close to the edge of the corrective range, you know, because that's where you can just hit a little bump or hit a knot in the wood and all of a sudden things get away from you. So you do want to keep that nice and controlled. And it looks really good, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure that your power cord, your vacuum hose all has a nice uh, good amount of slack so that when you're in it, no surprises are going to (laughs) happen on your way around the track. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I do even to like lock it into my brain is sometimes I tuck my thumb underneath the palm of my hand. 
I like that. To, uh, you know, just reinforce the idea that I really don't want to retract. Here. Right. Excuse me. I'll reclip this. Okay. We already got our dovetail cutter in there, so we're going to bring this over. Use a little double sided tape. Mm hmm. Make sure that I put this in the right orientation. This is one of our tops. We've already cut out the rounded corners and the leg pass throughs. Probably going to overdo it with the double sided tape, but. Hmm, the diagonal tape method. You don't I, see that one often. I go diagonal just to make sure, you know, half our spoil boards here have so many different cuts in it that uh -huh. uh, I'm trying to get as much purchase as I can. Yeah, that's a great tip because nobody else goes diagonal with their tape in the shop here, you know, so you can be assured that you've got some unique space there. Okay. Make sure that's clean. And oriented in the right way. <laughs> firmly against the back, firmly against that left stop block. And of course, pressure. This tape is pressure sensitive. So you want to make sure it doesn't move anywhere? Got to get on top of it a, li a little bit. Uh, Russ was telling me that a uh, good little tip, too, is to put a little painter's tape, masking tape, right here on that front edge, because that is the entry and exit point for this sliding dovetail. So if you want to avoid any potential, or help avoid any potential tear out. Yeah, you're going across the grain there, and this is a brand new sharp dovetail cutter, but it would just be such a bummer to get below out there right at the end of the project and have to you know, glue a chip back on or something like that. Totally. All right, same deal. I put my origin back down on my workspace. I recognized it. And this is what I'm working with. So I'm going to erase my cut history, delete this old file, and bring in my tabletop. Bingo, table contour. No, table, table dovetail. dovetail. Here we go. Boom, zero, zero. And let's just show, Beautiful. This, show this off before I start. I hope you all can see this. As you start the cut, nice parallel lines. Then about two thirds of the way in, you start realizing that they taper in. This is a, an incredibly satisfying sliding dovetail to put together because it goes in really nicely. And right at the end, you got to give it a little a little muster just to bring it all together, but and it feels just feels right. Very solid. And uh, why why do we go through all this trouble to use the tapered sliding dovetails, Jake? This is kind of a cool one that people coming from more of a plywood CNC woodworking background might not know about. Uh, well, for one, it's a fantastically strong joint, but it also allows for the natural movement of the wood. So. Over time, over moisture changes, humidity levels, your wood is going to move a little bit. And this is, it's a dry joint, right? You don't even throw any glue in it on no during glue. final assembly. So it's going to mm -hmm. be able to move over time. Mm -hmm. that's with the seasons, want. if you move cross country, it'll be able to move with you. Wood movement can be a problem or not a problem, depending on where you live and the stability of the climate that your piece is in. Like if I had a piece of woodworking in my apartment here in San Francisco year round, it's gonna be pretty stable. But if I move to Florida where it's muggy, that's gonna move all over the place. Yep. So you wanna give it room to do that. Cool. I'm gonna run my cut settings by you. 7.5 mm -hmm. millimeter depth, same depth as yes. the cross member. We're going to do yes. this with a one millimeter offset first. Yep, to start. Yep. Just clear that out. Yep. All right. And again, no retracting. No retracting. <laughs> no retracting. And also... And you've got that You've got that guideline, that blue guideline at the edge, so you know where to start and finish. Yeah. So I'm going to start out here 
bring it in. Also, I don't know if anyone's in the habit of changing their auto speeds, but make sure it is at default or slightly lower. You don't want to uh, come in too hot. Mm -hmm. I guess that's more of a problem for us because people change auto speeds that's... a lot here. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just a little trauma coming out here. Yeah. We had a couple incidents where the auto speed was turned to full blast at the shop this week. <laughs> it was it was surprising to say the least. All right, let's let it rip. Again, the important things for this are that you want to make sure that you plunge and retract outside of your workpiece. You want to make sure you keep it nice and smooth. And you can see Jake used auto mode there to go around that corner. That's a great way to make sure your corners are smooth is to use auto mode, let origin feed for you. Uh, and don't retract while you're in the cut. Otherwise, you're going to blow out that dovetail. Going right to a zero millimeter offset. One more quick pass just to clean this up. We do try to follow that same roughing and finishing protocol for pretty much all of our cuts here at headquarters. Uh, roughing to clear out most of the material and finishing to clear out just the last little remaining bit of material and give it a nice smooth edge quality. And you can tell Jake's very confident because we did a test cut earlier today on this. He's pretty confident about how that zero millimeter offset is going to fit. So he's going ahead and doing both dovetails to start. You can see the one finished on the right hand side. Jake driving origin nice and carefully there. And the final pass. Again, keeping it nice and smooth, staying nice and centered, more or less, in that correction zone, just because you don't want any surprises, not because Origin is any more or less accurate anywhere in that correction zone. It's equally accurate through the whole range, but you don't want any surprises if you're by the edge there. A little bit of cleanup, probably peel off that masking tape and do a test fit. Yeah. That looks beautiful. Nice, no blowout. Yeah, I did uh, slow it down quite a bit as I was coming around and exiting. I really went nice mm -hmm. and steady on that exit pole just because I didn't want to catch the grain by surprise. Mm -hmm. We're looking good. All right. What are the odds I have a piece of sand? Is it time paper? to see how it fits? Let's just see how it fits. The guidance from Johannes is that it should go in about two thirds of the way smoothly, and then you should be able to drive it home with a hammer the last third of the way. So Looks right like we're there. about there. Right there is that. Yeah, grab right point. there. Mm hmm. Voila. Wow. Is just that's absolutely beautiful solid and, and that joint's going to hang on to that tabletop as it expands and contracts over time and it's not a hassle to work your way out too if you needed to take a bass apart back apart just has that bite yeah. right at the end mm -hmm. double check the other side oh yeah mm-hmm very good. I just wanted to mallet it again. That is <laughs> <laughs> that assembly is pretty satisfying, Jake. I wish we had a so whole table to assemble. Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, a little turkey uh, out of the oven situation here. We have the cross members that Russ is so kindly made for us we have the legs and we have a nicely book matched top ready to go wow beautiful i can't even say that about my own work <laughs> it's 
<laughs> you know, gotta say, I did a pretty good job on that one. You did indeed. All right. We're all about the bandsaw these days. I'm gonna all do about thing- that resign. I'm gonna do things over here because I have an overhead camera. Give myself a little room for activities. It's not great with the workstation there, I'm being told, but that's okay. First things first. Slide the dovetails in. Right, because it's one thing to cut one dovetail and one frame and assemble it. It's another thing to get that distance matched exactly right on the stretchers. Beautiful. Oh, boy. Beautiful. You can tell this one's been assembled and disassembled a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, it just feels so good, too. And we have those 10 ends ready to go, ready to accept the legs. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, you did something different here. You knew that you weren't going to be stacking your tables, so you just decided to cap it. Or, or rather, make it uh, cut it long. Mm-hmm. Right. On the last page of his instructions, Johannes invites everyone who makes this table to remix and remake the project to add their own flair. So I thought, yeah, I, I should do that, too. Um, I knew I was only going to make one of these. I was never going to stack them. So what I did was I adjusted. I did the math for the length of those table legs. And... Rather than cut the pocket in the top of the table leg and the cap that covers that in the standard project, uh, I just went ahead and cut legs a little bit extra long. I also added a dowel feature to the legs and the tabletop to support the tabletop on the outside um, to give it that strength that the stepped leg in the original project would give it. And one last thing, Jake, if if you lay the table flat by the legs and push the top back apart you'll get that nice little reveal in the (laughs) middle yeah there you go that's designed into this project and that's the that's the space where this tabletop would expand or contract as it needs to because it has to have somewhere to go you can't just design that joint and then leave no clearance anywhere you have to have that you have to have that room for it to work to do its magic very very cool I'm ex- I'm excited to make one myself. I definitely plan on going at least three high. So, all right, there you go. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> that was fun. All right, I encourage everyone to go forth and make this project. It is a, f- a great learning opportunity. Great opportunity to use mm-hmm. sliding dovetail, um, and of course, always to hone in your mortise and tenon joinery. And yeah, you're finished. You know what I want to see? What? I want to see someone use the scale feature on Origin to not remake these files in Illustrator, but make this table twice as big. Use one and a half inch thick material instead of three quarter inch material. Make it twice as tall, twice as wide, twice as long. Just scale it up. Yeah. I think it would make a nice little dining size table, a little cafe table. Totally. If If it were twice as tall. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a really. You're about at the right spot at that point. Yeah, I want. Let's let's see it. Let's see it. <laughs> let's see it. All right. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Take we'll care. We'll see you next time on Shaper Sessions. Thank you.